What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we are talking about, we're answering the question, do relationships with narcissists ever really end? If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to episode 977 of The Narcissist Code. Boom, 977 episodes, y'all. Goodness gracious, we are real rolling along. I, I need some ideas on what to do for episode 1000, which is coming up pretty soon, y'all. This is crazy, crazy, crazy. So yeah, do relationships with narcissists really, truly ever end? Do they? What do you think? Drop your answer in the comment section right now. You have two seconds, one, two, go. Um, <laughs> but seriously, yeah, so they do end, y'all. They can end, you know? But a lot of times, like sometimes a narcissist will absolutely leave you alone, right? Some narcissists don't hoover you. They don't mess with you after the relationship ends. Some of them will disappear and, and be out of your life like they never even, like it never even happened. You know, like you've rebuilt after the wreckage and all the others, like, like a, a little toxic tornado came through and ripped up a lot of stuff. And now you've rebuilt and they, it's like they never existed, right? But some of them will some of them will make it hard to get rid of them. Like a, a, a tick that's dug deeply into your arm. He was like, ah, I gotta grab his butt and twist it. You know what you know, I tell you? Don't you gotta grab the butt and twist, make sure you get the mandibles to make sure the tick, the tick is out of your system. But it, even when you pull them out, just like a tick, even when you pull them out, sometimes they leave things behind. Right? Some ticks leave behind the Lyme disease, which could ruin your life. Yo, they leave behind crazy debt. They leave behind toxic traits. They leave behind emotional, physical, uh, mental trauma. They leave behind just so much wreckage in your life that will leave you to pick up the pieces. But does the relationship ever end? Yeah, some of them do. Yeah, most of them do. There Are there some narcissists that will just continuously, constantly try to keep popping up into your life? Yes. There's some narcissists that damn near will almost never give up. 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. I'm pretty sure that you, a lot of people can attest to that. Five years later, I've moved on, they've moved on, but they're still in my inbox. They still create fake profiles and stalk me. They still send me messages and this, this, that. A lot of y'all have experienced that. And that sucks. I'm just telling you that and that sucks. But it's because sometimes like this is the like this topic kind of crosses the the threshold of what a lot of people refer to as the final discard, right? Like the final discard. Like, is this the final discard? It could be, but a lot of times it's up to you when the final discard happens. Like when the fight, when, when, when it's finally final, it's up to you to be done with it. It's up to you to keep cut, to cut off communication. It's up to you to remain, maintain no contact. It's up to you to maintain the lowest of low contact, just about the kids. If y'all have kids in the picture, it will not, it, be, it falls into you, up to you. Because some narcissists will leave you alone. I told you, some of them, some of them will disappear and leave you alone, and never, never, never to be heard from again. It sounded like the beginning of uh, Moana. Maui lost his hook and fell into the sea, never to be heard from again. <laughs> but Tafiti grew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I, I watched too many movies. Um, but yeah, some of them will leave you alone and disappear. But some of them will remain in your life. They'll try to. They'll try to hoover you. You know, the back and forth, the on and off. That type of stuff continues until you decide to put an end to it. You, you have to decide to put an end to it. You have to decide to put the put the, the nail in the coffin. You have to decide to file the restraining restraining order. Sometimes you have to decide to file the eviction notice to get them the hell up out of your spot because they refuse to leave. They're not on the lease. They're not on the deed. They're not in, they're not on the mortgage. Y'all not even married, but they refuse to leave. You have to evict them, but you have to be safe, of course. You have to be safe because you never know how people are going to react when they, they feel like their life is on the line or their, their life is about to be turned upside down. You just never know in that space right there. So that's what I'm telling you. You have to, you it, it falls under you. And I, I know it doesn't sound, I know it doesn't seem fair, but you know, a lot of times in these types of relationship spaces, fairness goes out the door. You know, fairness leaves the, fair, fairness packs its, bag, packs, packs its bags up and leaves. It's not fair. It really isn't. So it falls onto you to be strong. You have to. Sometimes you have to be stronger than this, a, a person is going through a similar situation. 
Some survivors have to go through more than other survivors. Some thrivers have to go through more than other thrivers, but you're still a thriver. You're still a survivor. You still got out of it. You still ended it. You still There's still finality to it, but sometimes you have to fight a little harder. Some battles are tougher than other battles. And that's not me trying to diminish anybody's struggle because your struggle is your struggle. I'm not trying to diminish anything that anybody went through. But I think people can acknowledge that some people go through more. You know, some people go through physical abuse, mental abuse. Sometimes it's verbal abuse. 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 <laughs> abuse. Sometimes it's verbal abuse. Emotional abuse. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying one is worse than the other, but sometimes it's like, well, I had this. They set my house on fire while I was in it and had me chained to the chained to the bed. I had to fight through and crawl through the flames and stuff like that to, to get out of there. You see what I'm saying? Some of y'all has. There's different levels. I mean, there's different survivors. I'm not trying to minimize anybody's struggle, anybody's strife. I promise you, that's not my goal here. Um, Cause I know everybody's survival is your survival. Somebody's little could be somebody's big. Somebody's less could be somebody's lot. Somebody's few can be somebody's much. You know what I mean? Within that space right there, that's what that's what goes on. That's what that's what happens right there. Because within this dynamic, but you are a survivor. You made it through. But if you want it to end, you have to be the one to end it. Lee, when is when does it end? What? Why do they keep coming back? Why is it? Why are they not blocked? I know some of y'all do block, but some of y'all just ignore. I know I understand if you have kids, but some of y'all don't have any more ties to the person. All the ties have been severed. They're just not blocked. You know what's keeping you from blocking it? What's keeping you from close from making this the final chapter in the book? D and I block they ass. D end. What's stopping you from doing that? What's stopping you? This is not this is, again. This is not no blame. But what, I'm asking you a question. What's stopping you? This is not victim, not victim blaming. This is victim empowerment to help you shift from victim to survivor to thriver. We love, we love it. All, we love them all over here. We love it all over here. But we, we want to help you transition to the next stage. So what, what is, what is stopping you from doing that? Because it ends when you end it. Sometimes, sometimes you have to be the one that just says, "Hey, look, I'm done with this. Don't call me anymore. No Block you everywhere. Boom." Sometimes you have to be the one to move out while they're at work because they're dangerous, because they're scary. Sometimes you have to disappear on them. I'm not saying abscond with the kids. I'm not saying that. I know everybody's situation is different because then sometimes you take the kids, you disappear, they'll file parental, parental alienation, some kidnapping stuff, and they'll, they'll get custody of the kids. You know? You know, follow up one mom's battle. She's I see her posting a lot of stuff about this. One, one O N E. Moms, M O M S, battle. She's on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. She's everywhere. Um, her name is Tina Swinton. She's an amazing creator. Y'all should check her out. Um, but she posts a lot about this type of stuff. Like, like she she can help you get out. I mean, she 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 has she 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 survived with her kids. I'm stuttering because she she affected me in a positive way. So shout out to Tina. Um, she's one of the first people to help me on my platform on my journey. So shout out to Tina Swinton. Um, over at One Mom's Battle. But that's what I'm just telling people. Make a plan. You can plan. Sometimes you, sometimes you can plan. Well, Lee, I don't have any money. I don't have any financial situation. That's why you have to start planning now. Because that's what the narcissist wants. They want you to feel beat up. They want you to feel beat down. They want you to feel like you're on a desert, deserted island by yourself with just the narcissist. They want you to make you feel like you're shooting smoke signals into the air. Nobody's going to see. They want to make you feel like you're alone, like nobody's coming to save you. Because sometimes, a lot of times, nobody is coming to save you. Because guess what? Sometimes you got to save you. Sometimes it falls onto you to save you. You have to take the ability. You have to take the responsibility of saving yourself. You're a superhero. And sometimes, sometimes you have to be the biggest superhero to yourself. Sometimes you have to put on your superman or your superwoman cape and a su super person cape and save yourself. Sometimes you have to be the hero to you. You don't need another hero. Sometimes you have to be the hero to you. You know? You can save yourself. You can look, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with stepping into inside the phone booth and changing into your super person costume and saving yourself. You can save you. You can save your kids. You can end this for good. You know, because sometimes being in these toxic relationships can take you to a dark place. Y'all know what I mean by dark place. Well, I'm going into details. In that dark place where you feel like you don't want to be here anymore. It'd be easy to, to, to opt out. 
We're not doing that. We're not opting out. You're opting into life and we're opting into thriving and we're opting into getting out of this for good. Ending it for good. Every time I'm on a pathway to healing lead, they come back into my life, then kick up out of your life. It's your life. You have to stop them from coming back. Restraining the orders, eviction notices, protecting yourself. You, if you're in the United States of America, you might as well go ahead and arm your damn self. It's the Second Amendment, right? Protect yourself because they don't they don't want to protect you. They the ones you need protecting from. They, oh, I just want look, I'm just calling you from 17 fake numbers because I just want to make sure you're safe. You're the person I need to be safe from. I need to be safe from you. Stop calling me. Leave me the hell alone. So do relationships with narcissists ever end? Yes, when you you end it for good. Even if they are, even if they are the ones that leave you, you can end it for good. By healing, by growing from it. Because just in case they come back, you want to be strong enough to say, hell no, leave me the hell alone. I'm done. You didn't see the last chapter of my book? I left, I blocked they ass, the end. Self-love journal on Amazon. You see what I'm saying? I'm a, yeah, I'm trying to empower y'all. I love, yeah, I love helping y'all. I love seeing y'all thrive. I've been doing this coaching stuff for almost three years now. Y'all know I've, there's people I talked to in the very beginning of my coaching journey. They were in touch relationships. They were in super abusive relationships. Where they were on the calls with me, bloody and bruised up. Didn't know what they wanted to do. We're talking about opting out. And we, and we talked and they opted in. And now they're three years later, they're married to other people. They're having happy, healthy lives right now. There's hope on the other side of it. That's what I'm trying to convey to you. It ends when you end it and there's hope on the other side. Sometimes the scariest, the, the scariest part of that healing journey is taking that first step because you don't know what comes next for you. That could be exciting or it could be terrifying or it could be a little bit of both. I'm excitedly terrified. What's coming next? But it ends when you end it. It ends when you take your power back. It ends when you love you more than you love them. It ends when you understand that you can give yourself more than they ever gave you. It ends when you decide that you can, you deserve way more than they can ever provide you. You love you. It ends when you love you. So do they end? Yes, they absolutely do end. Just because, just because they keep messing with you doesn't mean it, it hasn't ended. Just because they keep coming back five years later, texting you from a fake number, doesn't mean it's not over. It is over. You're done with them. You're over them. Who gives a damn they reach out from a fake number later on? That doesn't, that doesn't mean the relationship is, is still going on. It's over. You've been moved on. You've healed. You've grown. It's been over. Nobody give a damn if they're reaching out now. What the hell are they going to do? They're going to try to ruin your life now? No, hell no. They had their shot. They ruined it. They tried to destroy you. They tried, they tried to bury you, but they forgot that you were a seed. They tried to bury you in six feet of dirt. Not realizing this, they, they tried to bury you and not realizing that they were actually planting you and they left you for dead and they came back and saw a, a six foot bush where they thought they buried you six foot deep. They saw a, a giant tree in a place that little seed they dropped in the ground. We're growing through it now. Oh, y'all not fired. Are you not fired up? God damn. Ooh. This, be, this might be my hypest video right here. I'm, I'm sweating. Y'all see the sweat? I'm sweating. That is sweat. That's an empowerment, but I love it. I love it. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> Y'all, subscribe to my newsletter because my video series about self-love is coming out here pretty soon. Subscribe to the newsletter. The link is in the bio. The link is in the description of every video and podcast I do. Every almost every video from my 30-day video series about self-love and growth. It's called How to Love Me. 30 Days of Self-Love with Lee Hammock. <sighs> almost every video is like this. Super empowering. There's no blame. It's, it's just it's healing the growth. The newsletter is coming out pretty loose. I'm going to drop it here pretty soon. I'm working on it right now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. It ends when you end it. Mental Illness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental illness rock star, and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos on my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids. But remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.